Starting your working life as a teacher can bring equal amounts of excitement and challenge. NQTs at Old No Junior in Birmingham deal with the daily pressures facing many teachers at a large inner city school. It's a five-form entry and, fortunately, newly qualified teachers Simrit Riet and Vicky Rutherford are part of a cohesive and supportive team. In this programme, we'll be looking at Vicky at work in the classroom. Educational expert Sue Cowley will be reflecting on Vicky's teaching and Sue will be demonstrating how teachers can use their voice more effectively. 18, 19, 20! So, with a new term about to start for Vicky and her new pupils, what has she been doing to prepare? OK, this is my classroom. It's in the terrapin hut. I've done quite a lot already. I've got the backing paper up and the displays. I think we'll have the days of the week and the months of the year on these walls. Nervous about tomorrow now. I'm waiting to see if the children are all going to fit in that space and how I'm going to group them in the mornings. This was a major pain, trying to put away all the tables so they could all see the whiteboard, but all walk around. This is my library area. I've got a few cushions at the moment, so a good sitting, they're going to get a cushion each lesson. I've got my stuff sorted for tomorrow. That's what we're doing tomorrow morning. <laughs> so I tried to be prepared. So we got stuck in the school. We got down the end of the road and the main gates were locked. By the time we come back up, they locked these gates, so we were stuck in the school. So I won't be doing that again, so I'm going to be leaving at a reasonable time and having an early night. The management team at Old No pride themselves on the support and encouragement they give, not just to their new teachers, but to all their staff. Yeah, we'll do one doing music. Well, I could do it because I'm doing music. music. Where do I Chris Jenny? OK. Do you want to write? Yeah, you do. <laughs> On the first training day, the, one of the things that we actually do is go through the structures and systems within the school. And, of course, the two NQTs were here. We went through the behaviour policy. It's a reminder, it's a drip, drip, drip process. All of the staff need it again and again and again. And you know, newly qualified teachers are just getting it once, but they'll need it on an ongoing basis. When you've done your day, you start your work, you're on the blue and yellow. Providing support for Vicky and Simrit is NQT induction tutor Mark Waters. Mark assesses new teachers within the first weeks of term and offers advice and feedback. Victoria's lesson uh, was a secure, satisfactory lesson with lots of elements of good. Um, and we talked about her classroom management skills and how she deals with low-level classroom management issues like shouting out, putting hands up, movement around the class. And that's going to be one of the targets we take forward and develop with her this term. Let's try again. We're going to practice this every day this week. And then by Friday, Abdullah, we will be absolutely excellent at it. OK. We might not even have to look at the board anymore. Okay, so we're going to go forwards, counting up first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. When the pen stops, you have to stop. You can put the hand up and tell me what comes after eleven. What comes next? Zeb, you're shouting. I just want you to say the number, OK? So I can hear you. You're right by me. Cross your leg. Abdullah, you weren't concentrating on some of that. So I want you to go and sit by Mrs Bellamy. And when we're counting backwards, to see you doing every number. I know you know your numbers. Yes, Faisal. Well, I don't you Faisal, I can't hear you because people are talking. If you're on yellow, red or blue, you're working independently. The children have been divided into ability groups to work independently at their tables. <laughs> Understanding and applying differentiation is one of the key skills of teaching. Have you done it, Zeb? Yes. Excellent, do the next one. Not getting round to all the tables has resulted in some challenging behaviour for Vicky. So, what advice can Sue Cowley offer when it comes to monitoring different ability groups? Now, you've been working together at the same school, but I understand that it goes back a bit further than that. Can you tell me, Vicky, when, 
when you and Simmit we, first met each we other? We met in September on a PGC course. We've known each other for a year and then we got a job at the same school together and the same year group. You, you're in the same year yeah. group? Yeah. And it's quite a big school, isn't it? How many forms are in that year? Five forms. Five entry. form entry. Now, we're going to look at some of Vicky's lesson. It's a numeracy <laughs> lesson. Simmit, feel free to intervene if there's anything you spot, particularly where Vicky's doing something really well. Okay. Now, <laughs> this is the start of term and yes. you're literally just getting to know your children. So who's this little chap here and what's he up to? This is Abdullah. Oh. <laughs> Flipped a pencil. OK, so Abdullah, he's a bit of a, a character in yes. your class, shall we say. Would you say that your class are more challenging than Simrits or...? I'd say in terms of behaviour, I've just got two or three boys, really, that once they disrupt the lesson, the other boys will follow. Well, what sort of strategies are you using at the moment to overcome that, Vicky? I put um, a happy and a sad side chart up with their names. Brilliant. So when you give them the verbal warning, if I, if I talk to them again, they move their name across. So right. it's just to get them out of the situation for a couple of minutes and to know that their name's there. Right. And then obviously for the rest of the lesson or the day, they're trying to show me that they can improve their behaviour to move it back to the good side. Let's right. have a think together, all three of us. How, how else could we encourage that child to go on task? Because I'm sure you have children the same as this Simra, in your class. <laughs> yeah. So we've got a child and we notice that she's talking rather than working. What's our first approach? What's the I would first maybe thing we say might now, try? obviously, tell her, remind her of how I've been asking her to work. And then I would look now on children who are following the way I've asked them to work to so give them house points. Brilliant. So, hopefully so you help might her. be pointing out, oh, this yeah, child's this doing really well. this is what I'm really looking well. for. Okay, you might also set her a target, and I think this yeah. whole thing of ta target setting can be really helpful. So if you can get this finished in this amount of time and stay on task, then I can give you yeah, this reward. So it's this kind of motivation and looking towards rewards before we have to move on to, to sanctions. sanctions. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, what you've done here by creating this chart, well, what have you done for the children by adding in this step? It's clever. What, what have I you think, done? one, it gives them time out of a situation so they can walk, put their name across, and also um, they can see their names there and they can visually see it, they've done it, and they know how they need to behave to move back. Brilliant, mm -hmm. brilliant. Yeah, and it's this kind of visual backup. I'd be slightly tempted, and I don't know if you've done this yet, it, to make it more of the chart. So to maybe add some colour. Yeah. Um, maybe do a big sun on one side. Because children, especially children at this age in primary, really respond to visual, visual, you know, sort of input. I mean, one teacher told me once that she'd created a weather chart, and it was a whole class behaviour system. And when she was happy with the class, she moved the sun higher and higher in the sky. When she was sad with the class because they were misbehaving, she, a cloud came in. Mm. And if the class had been absolutely brilliant for an entire day, they got a rainbow and they got That's to stick oh, around. Because <laughs> I don't have anything like with my whole class, like praising them. Like I can't give them all a house point. And I've thought, you know, what is it that I can do? That's yeah. quite nice. That's nice. And it's quite creative oh, yeah. as well, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And it's trying to come up with these more creative approaches, which as you become more secure as, as you gain in experience, you'll start getting these crazy ideas and you'll think, oh, like another teacher told me, when she wanted to get the class silent, she had fairy lights tacked around her whiteboard and she used to just flick them on. And it's <laughs> these unusual little things that start to personalise your classroom. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the thing with rewards is always to keep reminding yourself to keep them kind of moving along a yeah. bit. If you stick with the same system yeah. for a long time, I, I think it starts to lose its, its value. Now, I'm going to play a little bit of footage where one, one table in particular, Vicky, are being a little bit naughty. <laughs> so, Vicky, here, you, you are moving around the, yeah. the class as a whole. And have you found that as the year goes on, you're more and more active? Yeah, in like terms you say now. Space? Obviously, you set down the task and then say, okay, ten minutes. Obviously, you work with a group. <laughs> <laughs> What's he drawing? He's got good art skills. Nice little face. <laughs> Is he a bit of a ringleader this one? No, to be honest with you, he's not one of the boys at the moment. Not at all. And Mrs. Gonna, is she going to spot them? Is she going to spot them? No, she's over there. 
And it's almost this thing of, I'm here, but I'm actually scanning the room the whole time. Yeah. I'm checking around, and you're probably finding yourself yes. doing that now. And let's see what happens when you spot them. No, they're still going. They're having a great time. I mean, they're having fun. And here comes Miss. Let's see what you say. Thank you. Me. If you know what you're doing, you've got the two right answers now. Now, do you see how you're behaving with him? How, how might you approach this differently now from the perspective of three months along the line? Well, I'd have checked that they'd have been on task, like you say. Nowadays, I give them time limits, like 10 minutes, I'm coming around to check your work, so hopefully it wouldn't even arise. But now, I can't even remember what I did then, but I think I was just surveying what was wrong. Him, Why haven't Which... you done the work? Lovey, darling. Yeah, okay. rather than. Rather than. You haven't done the work. What's going on here? Yeah. It, it needs to be firmer. And I think this is something we can touch on and perhaps have a look at a couple of examples okay. of Vicky. So we're going to come in and look at your rewards and sanction systems. Maybe we can spice them up a bit. We're also going to have a think about how you use your voice. So can you improve the tone of your voice and use that to help yourself manage behaviour better? Yeah. And then the other thing I think we need to focus on is the space. Can we improve the classroom space, the way that it's used, the way that it's laid out, and have a little think about that? Welcome to my classroom. In the final part of this programme, we'll highlight one of the items on Sue's list. An essential tool of the teacher's trade, using your voice. <laughs> now, what we're going to do is we're going to count. And we're going to start at one, and we're going to count up to 20. So one, completely deadpan and flat. By the time you get to 20, you're really hugely excited, and there's loads <laughs> of tone in your voice, and it's coming into your body as well. Okay. Now, this is an exaggeration, OK? okay. And you're not expected to be like this, some kind of, you know, tone, tonal idiot okay. with your kids. <laughs> okay. OK, ready, and go. One, one two. two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. OK, now you start to do <laughs> yeah. it. It feels a bit odd, doesn't yeah. it? But you start to get there. Simrit, what was your perception of Vicky? It was really good. I was getting excited at the end. <laughs> you're sure it's here. And do you feel the difference? Yeah. Yeah, it, between this, this slightly flat and... And then when... And it's almost... Bring it into your eyes as well. Can you go like that to me? Really, really wide on. That's <laughs> it, OK? When you're seven, when somebody goes like that, <laughs> yeah. do you yeah. see the difference? Yeah, yeah. Okay. absolutely. Brilliant. Well done. Thank you're you. brave. Brave <laughs> to do that. <laughs> As a teacher, your voice is one of your main tools and it's lovely to see Vicky and Simrit thinking more about how they use their voices. And when it comes to getting it right with behaviour, getting it right with your voice will really help. <laughs>